This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1997, The Things That Get in the Way of Doing, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net, and I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick, reading you blogs every single day of the year. We have a bunch of shows on our podcast network covering different topics. Search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this to find all of them. But for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. The Things That Get in the Way of Doing by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. After working on my procrastination, mindfulness, and productivity habits for the last nine years, I've gotten much better at doing and accomplishing. Today, I sent out the digital editions of my book to Kickstarter backers, for example, while working on a 13-person coaching program, a habits membership program that has several thousand readers, writing a guide on mindfulness, preparing for several webinars, and of course, writing this post. One task at a time, but lots getting done. And yet, I still have things that get in the way of my doing. Some of them I'm okay with, but nonetheless, I thought I'd share what I've learned about the things that get in our way. Doing obstacles and some solutions. This list isn't complete, but just some ideas to get you thinking. Number one, online distractions. This is a big one for me. I can go to my favorite online sites, just a quick check, and get lost for an hour or two, or more if I hit on something that really fascinates me. What has worked for me? To overcome this, I try to remember to pause and often get up and walk around and realize that I've gotten lost again. Then I'll clear my screen and just have one thing in front of me and try to stick with that until I'm done. I don't always succeed, but when I remember to do this, it works very well. Number two, being overwhelmed. If you have a ton of things to do, it can make you feel helpless. How can you possibly get it all done? So you don't even start. You can't get it all done, at least not right now. What has worked for me? Right now, you can do one thing. So when I'm overwhelmed, again, I'll clear everything and make a list of one to three things I need to do most right now. Yes, sometimes the list is just one thing because that helps me focus and not feel overwhelmed. Number three, email is piled up. When my email inbox has a lot of messages piled up, it can feel overwhelming. What has worked for me? I use Google Inbox or Mailbox and just snooze a bunch of things I don't need to worry about right now. Then I'll deal with as many of the others as possible and leave some to deal with later. Instead, I close email and get to work on a more important task. Number four, feeling indecisive. What if you have so many things, you can't figure out what to do? Often that leads to doing nothing. I remind myself that not deciding leads to stagnation, and while I don't believe you need to move at a million miles an hour, I don't like myself held stagnant by fear. What I've learned is that this is a fear of not knowing the perfect decision because we don't know what the future will hold. Is it better to take that new job or keep this one? Is it better to work on this project or that one? is impossible to know because the future is uncertain. What has worked for me? I try to just pick one based on whatever information I have, usually a gut decision, and take some action. It's better to work on something than to stop moving because of fear of uncertainty. Number five, no energy. This is a huge one, bigger than most people realize. When you have a lack of sleep, you are low on energy and you just don't feel like working on anything hard. You can't focus and you have a hard time pushing through. What has worked for me? Either I give myself a break, but really focus on getting to bed earlier and getting some good sleep, or I push through and do the hard stuff. Just because we don't feel like doing something hard doesn't mean we should skip it. Number six, lack of discipline. This is usually the result of low energy or being in fast mode and not wanting to stop to focus on something. You tell yourself you're gonna do something, but then you don't. What has worked for me? I forgive myself for messing up and instead, I try to be mindful about what's going on. Am I tired, in fast mode, not inspired by this project? Instead of the general, I lack discipline diagnosis, I try to find a more specific problem and then address it and then get to work. Number seven, task switching. Again, being in fast mode means that you're doing lots of little tasks, constantly switching between apps and tabs in your browser. You can't stick to one because you're constantly switching. What has worked for me? Again, I'll take a break and then clear everything and refocus myself. 
I try to stick to the one window mode, close everything else, and just focus on one thing for as long as I can. And I'm not always successful. Number eight, getting little things done. We feel productive when we're taking care of lots of little tasks, emails, calls, errands, small admin tasks, paperwork. But while those do need to get done, they aren't the important things. We're avoiding the important things, but we feel productive because we're busy. What has worked for me? I fall into this trap a lot, so when I catch myself doing it, I stop and ask myself what my big task is for the day. Sometimes I can't choose between two to three big tasks, but it doesn't matter. I just need to pick one to three. Then I ask myself, am I working on it? If the answer is no, I'm not really being productive, I just feel like it. Number nine, task seems too big. We all fall into this one and we all know the answer. It's too big, so we put it off. The answer, of course, is to break it into smaller tasks, but we rarely follow this advice. What has worked for me? I focus all of my energy into starting. All I have to do is write the first few words. Once I do that, I focus on the next few paragraphs, one bite at a time. And number 10, we're afraid we'll fail. We also all have this problem, We don't feel competent at this task. It's confusing. feels like we'll embarrass ourselves. And this is understandable when we're doing something that's not in our wheelhouse. What has worked for me? I remind myself that letting myself be controlled by fear is not the way I want to live. I remind myself that failure is actually not the worst outcome. Not even trying is a much worse outcome. Why? Because if you try something and fail, you learn something, you got some practice, and next time you'll be better you're further along than before. But if you don't even try out of fear, you don't learn anything and you'll probably keep doing this because you're creating a pattern of running from fear. Instead, push through and do it anyway because the value of doing is so much greater than the value of being safe and doing nothing. What obstacles get in your way? How can you get better at dealing with them? How can you get to doing? You just listened to the post titled The Things That Get In The Way Of Doing by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. That'll do it for the Sunday episode. Now just three episodes away from 2000, which is crazy to think about. If I started this podcast thinking I'll get to 2000 episodes, that definitely would have been too big of a task. Just like Leo said, gotta break it up into smaller pieces. But I think after I crossed five years of doing this podcast, I stopped thinking about milestones. But 2000 definitely sounds like a lot now. Thank you for being here and being part of this journey. It's meant a lot over the years. And thank you for sharing the show with others. That's helped keep me going all this time. Have a great day, a great weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.